Um, why are you guys under the desk? Actually, you know what? I don't want to know. But I do have a funny joke for you guys. All right, here it is. Why can't you play poker in the jungle? Because there's too many cheetahs! <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. How can you laugh, Asus? That was awful. In fact, if he ever tells a joke again, I'm going to format my hard drives, choke my CPU with a SATA cable, cover myself in Galaxy Note 7s, and hope I reincarnate as a Mac. I never want to hear one of his bad jokes again. What's up everyone, Matthew Monas here, and today I finally get to do my Ryzen build that I've been holding on to for the past couple of months. I'm super excited and I can't wait to show you guys my build. With that being said, this is a video and gaming build mostly focused on video editing, and my other option was going with a 6850, but the price difference was big, and for the price, I think the 1700X offers a lot more value. Still good enough for gaming, especially for the type of gaming I do. Great for streaming, and it's great for Adobe Premiere because it can utilize those extra cores. Now, I'm gonna start off with the case, and the case that I went with is a very popular case. Every YouTuber and their mothers has basically used it in one of their videos, but I still think it's one of the best looking cases you can get on the market today because of its minimalistic design. And that's the Fantex Enthu Evolve. It's clean, it's simple, and it looks great. There's tempered glass on both sides, so you can see inside the case no matter what side you're looking at it from. And on top of that, it has a cage on the bottom so you can kind of hide all of your cables, which is a big plus. Also, it's not too big, or nor is it too small, so there's plenty of space to work in. Next is the power supply, and I went with the BitPhoenix Whisper M. This is 850 watt power supply. It's 80 plus gold certified, so pretty good for pretty good for energy savings. Um, it's guaranteed to run around 50 degrees Celsius, seven year warranty, which is great. And it's an affordable price. I'll link all the prices in the description down below. And even though 850 is quite beefy for the type of system I'm building, I kind of always like to go a little bit over. So this way down the road, if I decide to add another GPU and a lot more or components into the computer, I already have that beefy power supply, which will be able to handle it. So my motherboard of choice is the ASUS ROG Crosshair 6 Hero. This is basically the equivalent of the Maximus version for the Intel platform. This one obviously supports AM4, so I can pop in my Ryzen chip. I love the color scheme, it's black and silver, and since I'm doing a black and white build, I wanted to have a black and white motherboard. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I went with a Ryzen CPU. I went with the 1700X. This is an eight core processor. It runs at 3.4 gigahertz, or 3.8 if it's turbocharged, and it is a fantastic CPU for editing video because it has so many cores to really spread things across, and it's still good enough for gaming, especially for someone like me who mostly plays Overwatch. On top of that, the price is just so good. Like when you compare it to a 6850 or a 6950, it's like a no brainer not to go for this one. So to cool the CPU, I used a Thermaltake Contact Silence 12. This is a very cheap heat sink. Um, it does the job, it's very good for the price. I paid like $30 Canadian for it, so that's like 10 cents US dollars. And the reason why I'm using this is because I have an NZXT Kraken X62 sitting in the closet, it's an all-in-one cooler, but I don't have an AM4 bracket for it. So I emailed NZXT and they're gonna send me a free bracket because I purchased it in the last couple of months. Speaking of performance, the GPU of choice that I went with is the Zotac GTX 1080. It's the AMP version. And to be honest, the price point was fantastic. I already had it for my last build, so I took it out and put it in this computer. I just can't quite justify spending a thousand Canadian on a GTX 1080 Ti. I just don't need it right now, especially for like, one minute faster render times, it's just not worth it. So the one thing that I wanna point out is the yellow coloring on the Zotac. It takes away from the whole black and white build, but I thought about it, I looked at it a little more, and it kinda looks nice, it kinda looks like an accent color, just because of the yellow color on the top of it, on the, on the back plate. And of course, also on the actual power supply, there's a little bit of yellow. So what I'm gonna do is, for my update, to my next video for this build is I'm gonna order some custom cables and kind of do like a, a yellow accent to the black and white theming. Speaking of cables, cable management is okay. On the back, I kind of just stuffed everything in. It's not professional, it's not perfect. It kind of resembles my life 
always trying to get organized but never organized enough. I think it looks clean enough. I don't, I'm not hardcore like some of the other guys out there who have to have perfect cable management, but I think if you're looking at it, you'll be kind of happy with it. On the front, same thing, it's very clean. There's no cable sticking out anywhere. I'm not the biggest fan of the cables that came with the BitPhoenix 850, so again, I'm gonna swap those out for some custom cables. For my main drive, I decided to go with uh, Samsung 960 EVO. This is an M2 NVMe SSD drive. This thing is insanely fast. You're gonna get read speeds of 3200 and write speeds of 1500. Which brings me to my second drive. That's a one terabyte crucial 2.5 inch SSD. This is the MX300. It's a fantastic drive and for the price, it's totally worth it. Now, the thing is when you get to that size of drive, one terabyte, um, it's probably the best bang for your buck. And last up, I went with the Corsair Dominator Platinum RAM. I went with 64 gigabytes. I want as much RAM as possible for when I'm editing video. These things look fantastic. They're black, white, and silver, so it goes with the theme. On top of that, they have a pretty good frequency of 2800 uh, megahertz, and it has a very good cast latency of 14, which is pretty good for DDR4. So that pretty much wraps up the first part of this video. In my second part of this video, I'm gonna completely replace all the cables. I'm gonna do a water-cooled build, either using an all-in-one or a custom water-cooled system. Maybe I'll do a custom water-cooled system just because I've never done it before. So if you guys would rather me do that, let me know in the comments below. So that wraps it up. Let me know what you guys think of these PC build videos. Is there anything that I can do to make them better or what type of builds would you like to see? Make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video.